So as we age, the heart undergoes specific inevitable changes, right, related to the age aging process. So it tends to get smaller, uh, it gets stiffer, and this can impact the heart's efficiency, uh, potentially reducing our exercise capacity, elevating our risk for cardiac issues. Um, but there can be exercise interventions like consistent aerobic exercise with a high proportion of it being vigorous intensity that can actually combat some of these effects. So there was a landmark study published from Ben Levine's group, and it was an intervention study, and it showed that two years of vigorous exercise in 50-year-olds was able to reverse the aging of their hearts by as much as 20 years, effectively making their hearts look more like a 30-year-old, which in my opinion is simply astonishing. You're taking a 50-year-old heart and making it look like a 30-year-old heart. Now, the exercise protocol used in this, this particular study, uh, it, it was a, a protocol that, that gradually increased the exercise intensity and also frequency. So the, again, I mentioned it was a two-year intervention. By the end of six, the first six months, participants were exercising about five to six hours a week with a large portion of training being in that maximal steady state um, intensity exercise, I, which I referred to earlier in the podcast. It's, it's often sometimes called zone three. It is a type of vigorous intensity exercise. Um, they also were incorporating more high, higher intensity exercise. So they also did the Norwegian four by four VO2 training, VO2 max training protocol I just referred to. And they did that once a week. And, um, I just think it's, like I said, it's simply astonishing that, you know, you take these 50 year olds and after two years of a more vigorous intensity exercise um, training protocol, it essentially reversed the effects of aging in the heart. Okay, so let's shift gears yet again and talk a little bit about metabolic adaptations. And again, this is where I think vigorous exercise really shines, um, particularly high intensity interval training. It improves glucose control, insulin sensitivity um, more, inf more efficiently and more potently than even continuous, you know, moderate intensity workouts. And, uh, you know, I do think that, of course, both exercise, you know, training protocols can enhance muscle adaptations and glucose regulation. Um, HIT really seems to, to do it quicker and um, again, more robustly, whereas moderate intensity exercise kind of demands longer sessions for comparable outcomes. So research has found that high intensity interval training can enhance the muscle's ability to take up glucose and improve glucose transport capacity. So during high intensity interval training and during vigorous exercise, there's a, a, a demand, a rapid, you know, a demand for rapid energy production. And so the body relies both on aerobic, so oxygen using, and anaerobic, non-oxygen using metabolic pathways to generate this energy. The anaerobic pathway can lead to the production of lactate, especially when the intensity of exercise surpasses the point at which the oxygen intake can keep up with the energy demand. Um, and, and so this is sometimes often referred to as the lactate threshold, as we talked about. For a long time, lactate was considered primarily as a waste product contributing to muscle fatigue. And, uh, you know, this has, of course, been completely reversed. Recent research has, you know, totally changed this understanding. Um, lactate generated in muscle tissue is transported not only back into muscle and into mitochondria to be used as an energy source, but it also, when it starts to accumulate at higher levels, travels systemically into circulation and gets transported to other tissues like the heart, the liver, the brain, where it's used for energy. Um, it's also used as a signaling molecule. So this is known as the lactate shuttle and was pioneered by Dr. George Brooks, who has really changed the field. And um, he also happened to be my second podcast guest ever on, on this podcast. Um, anyways, lactate, you know, it, 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 I mentioned it, it acts as a signaling molecule in those tissues as well. And you can think of a signaling molecule as a chemical messenger that is sending a message to other cells. One of those messages is the upregulation of gluco glucose transport capacity. So vigorous intensity exercise, high intensity interval training 
when when that lactate production accumulates, it stimulates the expression and activity of glucose transporters known on the muscle, known as GLUT4. And this is on the muscle cell membrane. And so that lactate acts as a signaling molecule to increase the transport of glucose transporters on, on the muscle cells. And this then allows for more efficient uptake of glucose into the um, from the bloodstream into the muscle, even at rest. And so consequently then insulin sensitivity is also improved and blood glucose levels are better regulated. There's been several studies that have demonstrated that HIT can improve glucose uptake, enhance insulin sensitivity, and decrease the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. This may be due to the intense metabolic stress created during HIT which leads to greater activation of glucose transport, great glucose transporters, um, and imp- improved glucose clearance. Um, so, as I mentioned, both high intensity interval training, continuous moderate intensity exercise can also be effective at improving glucose transport capacity in the muscles. Um, HIT promotes rapid increases in glucose transporters, allowing for that efficient glucose uptake and utilization. Whereas continuous moderate intensity exercise, although it's less intense, still does also enhance glucose transport capacity. Um, it improves the overall fitness of muscles as well. So, you know, again, it's just a longer duration of exercise time to, to get there. And um, with, the, with the lactate generation that happens with, you know, high intensity, high intensity exercise, you're getting that immediate signal from lactate to increase the gluc- GLUT4 transporters. And so it's a, it's a very rapid and robust adaptation that happens. There's ed- other metabolic adaptations. So um, just, just kind of talking about mitochondria. Mitochondria are very important and they play a lot of roles in the body, but one of the most important ones is the production of energy in the form of ATP. This is obviously very important for muscles, but also hugely important for the brain. Um, the heart, the liver, pretty much every organ. Athletes are very interested in mitochondrial health because they want their muscles to efficiently and effectively produce energy when they're training. But mitochondria are also very important in the context of aging. As we age, our mitochondria become less efficient at producing energy, and this poses a problem for physical activity, but also just for normal functioning of our organs. Now, that problem of mitochondria not producing enough energy can actually be overcome by increasing the mitochondrial volume, or what's called mitochondrial biogenesis. And exercise, particularly vigorous exercise, is one of the best ways to do that. So one of the most powerful indicators of healthy mitochondria is the ability to generate new, healthy, young mitochondria called mitochondrial biogenesis. Vigorous intensity exercise, like high intensity, high intensity interval training, I mentioned, um, it's one of the most powerful stimulators of mitochondrial biogenesis. This has to do with the metabolic stress that is induced from vigorous intensity exercise. The lactate itself, again, lactate is a signaling molecule. When you're producing greater amounts of lactate, that actually activates one of the major pathways that regulates mitochondrial biogenesis. It's called PGC1-alpha. And again, lactate's acting as a signal to produce more of that PGC1-alpha. So when we perform vigorous intensity exercise, such as HIT, that lactate's generated from the muscles. It's shuttled into the mitochondria because exercise increases the Um, the number of mitochondria per cell, again, mitochondrial biogenesis, and the more lactate that's able then to be used as um, energy 